I lost a very close family friend named Luke Hoyer, who was a freshman. He was 15. Um, my brother is 20, and he met Luke's older brother, Jake, when he was in kindergarten, and that's when our moms met. So I've known Luke since basically he was born. And my mom, would, like I called her right when I found out about the shooting and stuff at school, because I was there, and she texted me to make sure I was okay, but then she, I didn't see her when I got home because she was with Luke's mom looking at hospitals. I don't want to cry. <laughs> looking at hospitals, trying to find him. And when they couldn't find him, they went to the Marriott that night and were like waiting to hear um, what had happened to him. And at about 1.30, we um, found out that he was killed. He was shot in the back and they think he died quickly, so at least he didn't have to suffer. But when I found out, I had to call my brother, who currently lives with Jake Hoyer, Luke's older brother. They go to UCF together, and I had to tell him what happened, and I just, I couldn't even get words out of my mouth. I just bawled on the phone with him for like two minutes. And I told him, like, at the end, I was like, it's real, like, this happened. And he had to tell Jake and then my brother came home the next day, and throughout all of this, like, the first few days of this, it was just a blur. Like, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, it was, like, one big day. Like, I went to Meadow's service, because I'm family friends with Meadow, too, and then I went to Luke's viewing, and then his funeral, I was there the whole time, and I can't even explain to you, like, the feeling of seeing a mother that you know so well that lost her baby. I can't even explain. It's just like, she's lifeless. There's nothing left in her. And something needs to be done about this. Something needs to change. She lost her baby and she's never gonna see him again. Luke, I've known him since I was little, like I said, and he was that kid that when you took pictures with him, when you would like go play and like, you know, we used to take vacations together and like, Gina would always have to be like, Luke, smile, because he would never smile. He'd always make these funny faces, and he loved basketball and football. And my brother, they're all at their old house. They had, like, a courtyard in, like, the front of their house, and there was a basketball hoop, and every time I went to their house, my brother and Luke were always playing basketball. Luke loved basketball at all of his, like, crosses and stuff that are at all, like, Pine Trust Park and at my school. There was basketballs everywhere and footballs because he loved football, too and chicken nuggets, like, I, like, it's funny, but like, that kid loved chicken nuggets. Like, anywhere he went, it didn't matter like what kind of food, like if it was the nicest restaurant in the world, he wanted to eat chicken nuggets. And for some reason, like, a few days after I was like, it was like late at night and I was hungry and I was like, what should I eat? And I was like, I'm eating chicken nuggets. And like, it's for Luke. Like, every time I eat chicken nuggets now, like, I'm thinking of this kid. Um, I also knew Joaquin pretty well. I hung out with him almost every weekend and I, I don't even have words like he, I mean he's such a great person like that's not even like enough to like tell you what kind of person he was I mean he was the one that spoke out for what he believed in if he was still here I'm a firm believer that he would be one of the people leading this movement he would be someone speaking out you know for everyone else